My name is Total Biscuit, and I suck at StarCraft 2. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and welcome to another episode of I Suck at StarCraft 2. Feeling a bit better about this game. This was a much better game than the last one. Up against Protoss player right here by the name of Arik Kazi. Fairly lengthy game, as you can see by the length of the YouTube video. Spoilers, not really relevant here, honestly. This is... This series is about analysis, it's not about casting, so, you know, I find ca the idea of casting my own games to be thoroughly disgusting. Plus, one, it would be terrible. I would be too busy shouting at myself. Like, oh my god, who's that idiot in the red, the Terrence? So bad, so incredibly bad, why, why is he not uninstalling the game at this very moment? Wouldn't work out so well. But, there is a spark of something in this game, of like, realization and maybe, just maybe a little bit of reasonable, maybe gold level play, possibly, or, you know, maybe I'm being too generous, could be silver, whatever the case, like, what I'm happy about this game and the way that I played it, I'm really happy about the way that I was able to keep applying pressure. Unfortunately, I applied pressure at the cost of pretty much everything else because my multitasking and my macro and my economic management sucks. It is bad. It is very, very bad. You will find this out. Hopefully this video will give you some tips as to how to avoid that. Okay, Jungle Basin. Nice map for Terran. Siege tanks. Dump them here. Everything that tries to get out of the ramp gets shot to pieces. Very nice. Big fan of that. Has a very easy to take expansion. Very well protected, but it does have destructible rocks at the back. Now, I had a vague strategy in mind for this, which was to apply pressure. And this was something I would I was saying to myself after the past few games. Like, look, apply pressure. For God's sake, you have to apply pressure, because if you don't, you will be owned. You will be absolutely wrecked. I believe I played a game on the US servers earlier where I waited too long, and I just got Baneling busted. There were like 20 Banelings. They killed everything I had, and I, I think my response to that was, good game, I am playing like a Class A retard, which would be correct, honestly. Arakazi scouts my two barracks approach which has a very simple counter, honestly, and the counter to that would be bearing in mind that he's actually ended up supply blocking himself right here, which is very unfortunate. Uh, it's actually really unfortunate looking at it. Takes him a while to get the pylon up there. He gets to sort it out eventually, though. The approach to deal with two or three barracks, early pressure, is sentries. It's as simple as that. Sentries counter marines so hard it's not even funny. And I'm not talking about directly counter, I'm talking about, hey, Guardian Shield, suddenly your marines are doing like 33% less damage than they should be. Or we're talking about force field, suddenly my ramp cannot be attacked by you. Get a couple of sentries out and that early pressure can be blunted very effectively until you can get some other stuff. Now his response is to actually build a forge, which I wouldn't necessarily say is a particularly great idea. Honestly, not the best idea he's come up with. I personally would have not wasted that. I would have maybe built a second gateway. Built some more units. Get some sentries. But hey, he's got another gateway coming up anyway, so it's not the worst thing he could have done. Put a couple of cannons down. It's not going to be too harmful. Thing is, again, a cannon against, like, stimmed marines marauders is not going to do an awful lot. It might kill one or two units, and it's not all that effective. And also, bear in mind... He's got a weak point right here. He's got two cannons based around one pylon, and pretty much all of his production is based around that one pylon. And as we're going to see later, that it was a bad, bad thing to do. Not a good idea. You always need to back up your pylons. Every time you should double stack pylons. That's just something, you know, I play a bit of Protoss, and I, I make a lot of mistakes as Protoss as well, but one of the mistakes I do not make is to only have one pylon supporting any given building. Especially when everything's so close like this, there was no excuse. A second pylon right there instead of a pylon here would have been much more helpful to him. Way more helpful. Because as it stands, I can shut down all of his production, all of his defenses, and his forge, which of course could be researching something at the time, by simply killing that pylon. So that is potentially devastating. Now, what have I got in the meantime? So I've got two barracks up. I've got a reactor and I've also got a tech lab. I'm researching stim. Again, stim early game is quite nice. It is very easy to abuse, as you might imagine. <laughs> it's very easy to lose an awful lot of health to stim. And if you over stim, then you end up in the middle of your opponent's base with absolutely no HP and you get carved to pieces. So that's not what you want to be doing. Something I try and keep in mind when I'm doing this. 
quite a lot of Marines couple of marauders coming out and once i've got my second marauder i'm going to try and apply pressure to his ramp which as you can see is not going to do anything because he has a sentry so he's going to be able to deflect that very easily indeed now i should know that he has a sentry because i already scouted a cybernetics core i scouted one gateway so and he i also know that he has the bead on my barracks play you know he knows that i've got two barracks up really early on he probably assumes i've got a third even though i don't I probably should if I was playing this correctly. Indeed, you'll notice I've got plenty of cash. I really should have a third barracks up, but I don't have a third barracks up. I'm actually building a factory instead. There you go. But my plan, again, on this map was to get siege tanks because siege tanks are great on this map. And if I'm if this push fails, then I can think of something else to do, which is marines and siege tanks. Pretty solid way to do things. So I take that zealot for free, but he's pretty smart by putting it there because he uses it to get some early scouting information. He takes a marine back, so not exactly a fair trade, but close enough. What he's able to do is, of course, block his ramp off with the force fields. He's actually got two more force fields worth of energy there, and he'll probably, yeah, he'll have a third one up available there, so I know that I can't get in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go harass his back door instead. However, this guy knows his stuff. He's not dumb. He's placed a pile on there. He's already got his expansion up, so his economy is rolling. His economy is way beyond mine because I... This is one of the problems I have right here. It's like, oh, apply early pressure, apply early pressure. Oh, I'm not building any SCVs. <laughs> Look at that. And it, not building any SCVs. I haven't saturated my mineral line, as you can very clearly see here. So my economy sucks. Now I'm going to try and break through him. I don't want to stim here. I don't know. I think stimming here actually would have been nice because if I had done it, I'd have probably got to that pylon, killed the pylon and not got any shots from the photon cannon and maybe had a better position up against these stalkers and sentries that are coming in at the back. But again, that's all theory craft. So I'm going to take the pylon down. I will lose a couple of marines in the process, but I do sh at least shut the photon cannon down. In reality, I probably should have shot at the photon cannon. Simply. And why do I shoot at the photon cannon? Well, because the photon cannon's got less health than a pylon. It's as simple as that. 100 less health, in fact. Same armor rating. Should have shot at that. Didn't. But there you go. However, he is a little bit foolish in chasing me here because I do have a couple of marauders. I did bring a few reinforcements in from the rear so I could take a couple of zealots. Very, very little cost indeed. Can I take a third zealot? Yes, I can. So, again, that's pretty good. And this is the point where I should have retreated. Yeah? If I had to any sense, I would have retreated right now because I've just thrown away... X number of resources for no reason. I, I can't kill that stalker. I knew I couldn't kill that stalker, but I went in for it anyway. I should have retreated right there. If we have a look at units lost, what you'll notice is that we're almost equal. If I'd retreated at that point, I would have had a good couple of hundred minerals lead on him, which would have actually done a solid job of making up a little bit for my garbage economy. Not building mules, still not a saturated mineral line. So bad. So very, very bad. Now, here's an example of a mistake on his part. That's why that pylon is bad. I was able to shut down his production right there. However, in reality, it didn't really do much to him because I actually don't have enough to really keep applying pressure. He can't warp in anything else except for on that one warp gate. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe I can apply pressure at the rear. I can't because his photon cannon is up and I don't have enough units to break that line. Or do I? That's the benefit of stim. I don't have to engage that photon cannon. What I could do is I can go into the mineral line and harass that instead and try and do damage to his economy. And his economy is so far ahead of mine, it's not even funny. He almost has twice the number of harvesters as I do, and he's got two bases. And he also has a third assimilator, which means his gas is rolling, which means there's a big risk of robotics play. But there you go. I'm going to take a quick run right here. I'm not going to lose the marauder, which is good, which means I can then stim into the mineral line and kill as many of his probes as possible. So I take a good five... Six. Looking for a seventh probe. Can we take an eighth? Yes, we can. Ninth probe. Tenth probe. I would if I wasn't spazzing out. <laughs> there you go. That had one HP. I could have taken a tenth probe for that, which would have been well worth it. I mean, you know, I was still good anyway. That's 450 resources worth of stuff I just took out there for the cost of three marines and a marauder. That's all right. That's not a bad bit of harassment. And again, this is why I'm kind of happy with this game, even though... All of the other stuff about this sucks. My economy is terrible. My multitasking is awful. I'm not even building units right here when I know I could be. I've got so much gas that isn't being spent on anything. You know, I'm trying to throw it into upgrades, but of course, infantry upgrades, you need to get the armory for to go past that, and I don't even have one of those, so, oh god, it's pretty bad. But whatever the case. I'm happy because I'm continuing to apply pressure, and I'm bottling him in his base and preventing him from actually attacking me, which is a mistake that I keep making. Now, he's got a warp prism on the way up. That is bad. He also has Protoss Shield level 1 coming up, which is 
to, considering how much money he's got, I don't really blame him for getting that, honestly. Because he has so much money. He's not spending it at all. He could get some more gateways. He's on two bases with only three gateways, which to me does seem to be a bit of a waste of time. He's got loads of spare supply, not spending it on anything. You'd think maybe he's saving up for Colossus. And as it turns out later, he does get Colossus. But he's still got so much money. It's, it's unbelievable. Let's try and take that pylon out again. This time, not as effective. As you can see right there, I shut down a cybernetics core. And what I didn't know, which I now do, is that shutting down a cybernetics core doesn't actually prevent you from warping in cybernetics core units. There you go. Just one of those little facts that I simply was not aware of. That was not my aim, I might add. I would, that was me being an idiot. That, the thing is, I hadn't scouted this pylon back there, so I'm thinking, oh, maybe I can shut his production down again. Nope. Not at all. And now we have this going on. An Immortal Drop with a Stalker and a Zealot in there as well. That is a nasty little combo. And here's the thing. With what I've got in my base right now, sure, no problem. And th the most annoying thing is I scouted that Warp Prism. I should have thought, he's going for my natural expansion. Of course he's going for my natural expansion. But do I think that? No, because I'm too busy single-mindedly trying to apply pressure. And you might think, oh, Total Biscuit, it's okay. Total Biscuit knows what he's doing. He does not. Actually, this is not me deploying siege tanks here. This is me getting stuck because there's no space to get my bloody siege tanks out. I have to salvage that sodding bunker. Oh, my God. <laughs> when I look back on this play, I think, what were you doing? Now... My opponent does have more gateways coming up, and he realizes he needs them. He's got now five gateways. He's got Twilight Council coming up as well. So get some blink. Always nice to get a blink on the Stalker, especially against Siege Tanks. And of course, he's going to be aware that I've got Siege Tanks pretty shortly. Down he goes, straight into the line, and my Mineral Line is in a lot of trouble. I need to get the hell out of there. That's exactly what's going to happen. Best to run away. I don't care if I have to stop mining. I need to get my workers out now. And here's the problem. Most of my armed forces are all the way over there. Now, I continue prosecuting my attack. Why do I do that? Because it would take me too long to get back. So I'm going to rely on dealing with them by pumping marines. Lots of marines. Maybe get a siege tank into play for good measure. Marines, great against immortals. Not so good against zealots and stalkers, as we have discovered. We took the immortal shield down there. Really, I should have actually focused fire on the zealot. And in the meantime, what you notice is I've gone all the way for his line right here. And this is actually not bad. You know, I do a good amount of damage here, thanks to the Siege Tank. Siege Tank placement was pretty good. Sit them down on the ramp right there. And here's the problem. I send in my Marines without Siege Tank support. They get blasted apart. And now I have tanks without support. I can take a pylon for free, but I need to get the hell out of there now. I can't really afford to deploy because I will get slaughtered. They have an Immortal out. He doesn't have a lot of shields on the Immortal, but I'm going to lose a tank for no reason. Again, very dumb play for me. I should have backed off immediately as soon as that happened. Now, what's going on in my base? What exactly is going on in my base? Let's rewind a little bit and we can have a look at that. So this is what's happening while I'm doing that. Simple answer, barely anything. Because, of course, my multitasking, not great. Watch this. You're going to laugh your ass off at this because this is so bad. Look at that. This is where the rally point is. Right on top of that immortal. I waste a siege tank. I throw it right at the immortal and I do nothing. It doesn't even get a shot off. Oh my god. So bad. So very horribly bad. Again, my multitasking is something I have to work on. Okay. Now I've got a bunch of SCVs and I'm doing nothing with them. His forces, still doing pretty well. Siege tank now available, but again, I get it murdered for no reason, because once again, didn't adjust the rally point. So that was pissed away for two shots, not really worth it. But I do have now four marines available. I try and take the immortal out. You know, that's my priority right now. Kill the immortal and the siege tank can kill the rest. But of course, he's too smart for that. He's out of there. But I am able to box in that stalker, shoot that stalker to pieces, and I don't lose any SCVs out of that. So that wasn't too bad. Now, my orbital command is still on fire. It's okay, though. We can fix that. I'm not going to let that die, and we can replace it momentarily. I've got my siege tanks deployed here, which is a good place, because, of course, what he's got, he's not going to be able to deal with that. Not too much, anyway. That is a massive chrono beast. Look at how much money he's got. I mean, what I will say is I'm actually more effective at spending my money, although not by much. <laughs> not by much. I'm only more effective at spending my money because I have less of it. He's got loads of money, and he's not spending it on anything. He's chrono boosting out there, rebuilding a very large force. And you'll notice I'm actually building a sensor tower down here, because I don't want any more of those nonsense drops coming in. As it turns out, he's actually going to lose that immortal. There you go. Not smart play at all. Runs himself straight into that. In the meantime, though, what did we miss? Let's go back there, because again, two things happening at once. Let's go all the way back, find out what we missed. So he's going to do a run at this little line of siege tanks over here. So let's speed it up and watch it happen. Do, 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 do. Warp in, warp in. That's a pretty damn potent force. How much shelling do we get? 
What do we take? We take a zealot. Do we get a second zealot? Yes, we do. We can get a stalker out of it as well, so we do. But the immortal doesn't die, and he takes three siege tanks for the cost of a zealot and a stalker. Well worth it. He breaks that line very nicely. Now, what have I got going? So, my economy is kind of back on track. I'm actually getting a good amount of harvesters out now, but I'm not using as many mules as I should be. I should be dropping mules pretty heavy right here. We can get this fixed up. We can get mules down. I've got enough energy for three, for God's sake. Come on, drop some damn mules, Total Biscuit, you fool. Get some mules sorted out. Now, Orbital Command is actually still on fire. As I didn't realize this, so we need to actually fix it. There we go. Mules finally going in there. Now, okay. We're still rolling pretty well. I'm not dead yet. So, I'm going to sort out an armory. Keep... Because, again, I need to spend this gas. So I could spend it on some Thors, or I can spend it on engineering bay upgrades. Got a lot of Marines coming out right there. I'm going to go four barracks now. Keep the Marines popping. I'm going to support them with here. We've got reactors coming up at Starport. And, you know, there's a good reason for this at this stage of the game. Because... From all of he's got, you know, the fact that I'm using loads of Marines, unless the guy is a complete nitwit, he's going to be building Colossus. Yeah, you've got to assume that. And he's evidently not a nitwit. He's been playing pretty damn well so far. He's made mistakes just like me. But again, he's probably a bronze or silver level player. Of course he's making mistakes. That is why we are where we are. And this is why we try and improve ourselves. Vikings. Perfect counter to Colossus. Also Medivacs. So, a lot of Marines. You know, I've got a lot of options there. It's perfect, absolutely perfect, because I can get those out. More importantly, Vikings can also act as a very nice scout. They can see over the lips of cliffs in order for my siege tanks to actually get some range. That is something I would consider to be fairly important. Now, he's got extended thermal lance coming up. He's got charge coming up as well. Charge will be nice against the siege tanks. Again, makes them move faster, so your zealots are not going to be taking as many hits. And again, in there, he's got another four gateways on the way as well, because again, he has the money for it. Why not? <laughs> many, many pylons over there. And it's chrono boosting through his robotics bay to make sure that he's got something coming up. Okay. Colossus. Doesn't have it on the field yet. He will, though. He's got a couple of immortals out, which is, again, a very good idea. He's got Observer placed right there. And what I've also done is I've placed a Marine up here because this is probably the place where he's going to take his third base if he takes one at all. Could place it there, or, of course, he could try and take the gold minerals, but taking the gold minerals is so very risky. Why is it risky? Well, it's fairly obvious. I can deploy siege tanks right here. Anything that tries to go anywhere near it, pff, it's dead, you know, straight away. Very hard to defend in that way. Okay. I'm rolling out right now, and this time I've actually got a fairly potent force, but so does he. He's got 25 Stalkers, he's got two Immortals, he's got seven Zealots, he's got a Colossus out, got a four Sentries up, which is nice. However, I do now have Guns Level 1, and I'm upgrading Infantry Guns Level 2. Once I've got that, I'll be able to completely nullify the effects of those shields. That'll be very helpful. Bear in mind as well, he actually got Shield Level 1 as well, so that's taking a further bit of damage off. He's got Protoss Armor Level one as well and i believe he upgrades level two in this game on shields which again is kind of unusual most people just go for armor right okay this is a pretty good position i take a little bit of damage from the colossus right here but he hasn't seen the siege tanks he thinks oh i've got a colossus i'm good and actually he has the numbers advantage but he runs it right into that which is incredibly unpleasant takes one but doesn't have the visibility to take any more and he loses a ton of stalkers on the way out and i lose bare minimum marines lost the siege tank there but in terms of units lost he is now well behind over a thousand resources worth so i'm feeling pretty good right now continue to spam more units out so i do have here's the stupid thing i've only got two of my barracks actually bound here so i've got inactive barracks because i didn't bind them properly to a hotkey so again that's another problem once again goes in there he tries to blink up the cliff it doesn't work he doesn't have the visibility to do it so i'm gonna take a lot of damage but i'll take another colossus out and i'll lose no siege tanks in the process tries to engage me once again he's not quick enough getting out there so i take another stalker for free and then he loses a sentry and a stalker in the process. So, again, this this is just so nice for Terran. It really, really is. The siege tank deployment there. I'm feeling, again, pretty good about myself. What I also have coming up are some Vikings. Because, hey, he's building Colossus. Of course I'm going to build Vikings. Why would I not? I don't want to throw my medivacs up there as scouts and get them shot to pieces by stalkers. I'll use a Viking for that. Okay, my idea here is I'm going to try and draw him down. I actually end up losing some of my units to my own shelling, which is incredibly dumb. So, he comes off the victor of that particular engagement because of nice force field placement. Limits what I can do there. I lose more marines. But, again, I do have more. They're not properly rally pointed, but I do have more. They're sort of scattered all over the map. They're continuing to come in. So, I can keep on bringing reinforcements. Hell, if I want, I can build some barracks here and reinforce them that way. Okay. 
That's a lot of stalkers, but again, I do have four siege tanks. So there's a lot of damage that's going to be coming in there. He loses several to that initial bombardment. It's a nice blink right there, but again, in come the Marines. He can take the siege tanks out, but he's going to lose so many units in the process because I have loads of Marines here. And I've got that Colossus nailed down very nicely there by the Vikings. I've got four, which means Colossus lasts maybe two salvos, if that. So no big deal. Now I can start really trying to pile it on, and I'm trying to win it here. Can I win it? It is a possibility. It certainly is right now. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm thinking, yeah, let's keep applying the pressure. Let's keep on it. Let's keep on it. Let's take the pylons. Wait, that's dumb. He has loads of pylons. I should be shooting at the units. Why am I... Oh, God. Why do I keep shooting the pylons? If anything, this is the good place to take the pylons. We take these two pylons. That knocks out three warp gates plus his cybernetics. Plus his robotics facility, even. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Honest. And I'm able to hold that line pretty well. His units are coming in drips and drabs now. So as far as I'm concerned, I pretty much got this. Continue pushing in the reinforcements. Bring that pylon down. Down go most of his warp gates. So he's not able to warp in too much after that. They keep applying that pressure. Break that pylon down as well. Shut down some of his other warp gates if we can. And there you go. Big damage coming in. Pulls his probes off the line. Not that he's really got much of a line left because, of course, he's fully mined out. Out into the middle. There's the stim. With armor level 2, guns level 2 plus shield, marines are really nice, especially when backed up by medivacs. They will chew through pretty much anything. And there you go. There's the good manners from him. Good sportsmanship. Good game. Like I say, so many mistakes that I made in that game. But the one thing that I am happy about is the ability to stay aggressive. I think... If I'm able to improve my multitasking and if I'm able to say remember to bind stuff, keep my economy rolling, get my macro up, then I'll be in a good position to actually raise in terms of leagues. Right now, though, I'm stuck in bronze because I can't multitask like it. Oh, it's just, it's awful. You, you've seen it. You've seen the evidence of it. But hopefully you guys have taken some value from this and you have learned from some of my mistakes and learned from some of the things to avoid, as well as a couple of reasonable tactics on Jungle Basin versus the Protoss. Like we saw, those siege tanks were very effective and the Medivac siege tank and marine push is very difficult to stop at that stage of the game if you don't have enough Colossi out, which again, he should have built them way earlier. He certainly had the resources and the tech for it. If he had, maybe that game would have turned out differently. As it stands, I managed to take that one, and I'm fairly happy about it. My name is Total Biscuit, and I still suck at StarCraft 2. I'll see you next time.